Uh, um, I might use some of the time that I gave up before. No, I won't. Um, the, uh, like everyone, I was pretty appalled at the events of the weekend. Um, uh, a group of people draping themselves effectively in the patron saint of England, uh, St George, turning up to, to scrawl graffiti uh, like swastikas on a building that's dedicated to St George. Uh, the irony won't be lost on members here, but uh, certainly the disgust, I'm sure, would be shared. Um, the reason why I wouldn't support Councillor Kemp in his motion is because the role of the PCC is a very, quite a specific role. I understand why people may want to look towards the PCC to take on the powers that we are asking government to, to devolve. However, the role of the PCC is to ensure the maintenance of an efficient and effective police force and then to hold the Chief Constable account, to account for the delivery of the police and crime plan. Um, as part of that, they hold, uh, hence why they hold the police, the police fund. Um, they don't have the same effective uh, uh, representative role as a mayor. They're not what tasked with the powers uh, and engagement in specific localities that the original motion suggests. It's therefore right to look towards the directly elected mayor of this city when we're dealing with issues in this city to exercise uh, those powers. And that's why I wouldn't support these powers being given to the PCC over the mayor. But I will make uh, my second and last point is on the issue of freedom of speech. Um, it's not freedom of speech, because this is something that comes up constantly when we talk about why we would try and ban particular people uh, protesting or marching within the city. It's not freedom of speech to simply permit anyone to say anything. Freedom of speech itself must be uh, reciprocal for those involved, those groups and individuals who hide behind freedom of speech and, exp and expression in order to promote an ideology or a political position that in itself advocates the removal of the freedom of speech should not be afforded that cover. To some it may seem odd to claim this, but we actually defend freedom of speech by shutting down and preventing those who would reduce that freedom of speech for all. This reciprocal nature is what should always guide such discussions on freedom of speech whether that's the far right or the similar opponents on the far left, we should not be worried about defending the many against the few. Thank you. Councillor Crowe. Lord Mayor, uh, like everyone else in this room, uh, I found the events uh, at the weekend shocking and disgusting. There's um, absolutely no place for, for hatred, for violence or for vandalism in the city. But I'll be supporting the, um, amended, uh, the amendment because I think it sort of suggests a more sort of proportionate way of, of addressing it. It sort of addresses the actual laws that already exist, things like um, violence and, and vandalism. We have laws for those for inciting racial hatred. So there should be ways and means of empowering the uh, police, police and Crime Commissioner to um, fully, fully enforce those rules. Um, on, on the original motion, um, it's just, it seems slightly problematic, like issues with the, the, the giving the, the, the role to the mayor, which is a, a role which only exists in some places, um, and some of the sort of terms of it in terms of banning groups because of what they believe, for example. Um, but like, believe it or not, I would actually trust the mayor, our current mayor's judgment on which, which marches to ban and which not. But you know, you open the door to a future where a mayor who isn't as isn't as scrupulous might you know ban for reasons that we don't think are, are correct. So I've got issues with the um, main motion, and I'll be but I'll be voting for the amendment. Councillor Bowman.
Secondly, though no doubt appalled by some actions which may not appreciate the sort of offence this causes, only someone from Liverpool would understand. And it's this local perspective that the motion and indeed the amendment both address that the people of Liverpool should be empowered to determine what can who can protest and when. And they should be able to determine things because of their understanding of the sensitivities and structure of our city. We know a lot more about the architecture and geography of Liverpool than anyone else, so we should be able to use that knowledge to determine how our city is kept safe. Now, what appears to be a debate tonight is which democratically accountable official should have the ultimate responsibility. Should it be the PCC, the current incumbent of that office, incidentally, I have the deepest respect for, or should it be the elected mayor? Now, the issue for me is what sort of matter is a deeply offensive protest like uh, what happened on Saturday. Is it purely a police matter? Is it purely a public safety matter? Or does it have wider civic implications? Now, in my mind, the presence of such people as there were there on uh, St George's Plateau on Saturday has far greater ramifications than purely the public order issue, though that is a serious issue in and of itself. The damage to our civic infrastructure and our civic sensibilities means that the mayor is in a better position to determine the acceptability of a protest, which is why I reject the amendment and support the original motion. Do any, any members want to speak on the amendment before we go to the vote? Councillor Mitchell, then Councillor Rowley. Uh, thank you, my Lord Mayor. Uh, it's not the first time far right have protested in the city and it's not the first time they've been met uh, by people to oppose them. This goes back a long, long way. My dad, who was born in 1921, told me of how Oswald Mosley's black shirts came to the city and they didn't just parade in the city centre, they actually spoke at an event at Walton on the Hill uh, in, in Royce uh, Ward. And my dad was, uh, uh, as a young teenager, part of a group of socialists who helped break up that meeting, which resulted in a huge amount of violence. Have a look, just look it up. It was a, it was a big event uh, of the time. And my dad, a few years later, as an 18 year old in 1939, volunteered and served for six years fighting fascism. He didn't come back and say to us, as we were kids growing up, I fought in the war. He always said, I fought fascism. And frankly, to see, as, as Councillor Bowman says earlier, to see that not on the areas that he stood after serving this country for six years, was profoundly shocking. We absolutely have a duty to challenge this. And you know what, there's a dichotomy, because freedom of speech, we all say, oh, we believe in freedom of speech in Voltaire's Do you know what, I'm not sure that I do in this case. I'm not sure that I think on any terms I want fascists to walk and speak in our city at any time. I'm not sure I agree. And I know that's a dodgy road to go down, I accept that. But you know what, sometimes we have to be brave and make decisions that absolutely are for the right reasons. And the reasons why I'm opposing the amendment is it should be the person that is sat in this chamber who is accountable for the actions and the decisions that we take and can be held to account by other members of this chamber to be able to make that decision. We should bring it back now and we should never, ever, on any terms, let these people parade on St George's Plateau again. Councillor Radford, then we're going to go to the vote on the amendment. I think uh, there's a real consensus we need this sort of legislation delegated. And there's only a little judgment call what's better, uh, the most effective role. Uh, the only reason I would actually prefer the amendment, I'll be, be candid, um, suddenly crime attacks have taken place on the borders of Liverpool with Highton and Kirby I think some, some horrific attacks taking place from youngsters in Highton. And I wonder if we really want legislation just to be looking at the city or should we take a broader perspective and actually say we wouldn't want any high crime um, marches in anywhere in the county. The Police and Crime Commissioner has powers for the whole county, not just Liverpool. And there are police and crime commissioners in every part of the country. So I think it would probably make it more effective, not just for this city, but for the whole region that we do to a police and crime commissioner. But either way, 
both motions are of merit and grateful for all members for their contributions. Lord, Lord Mayor, can I ask a quick question? Can I ask a quick question? Are we only allowed to put forward motions that are relevant to this city and not other authorities? That's right, Lord Mayor. The, the uh, essence of this is about practical application. We couldn't possibly speak on behalf of the other constituent authorities of the Liverpool City Region area. Well, that's a moot point, really, because the, it depends on how, if, if at all, this moves forward nationally in terms of which direct elected mayor at which particular juncture. So there could be a situation in 12, 15 months' time where direct elected mayor for the city and region, if they've got the powers, would do what you're achieving. But what's before us today, we've got to deal with what's available to us today. Mayor Anderson. Look, I mean, I, I'm not su su supporting the amendments, and, and this is a question of he says tomato, I say tomato. And if it comes from probably anybody else, I would have supported it. But can we look at any opportunity just to do something that's different than what we're proposing to do? He talks about the position of the PCC and elected mayors. Well, we don't know this government's in favour of elected mayors and not against, and not in support of PCCs. To try to get rid of them. We don't know whether we're going to have a PCC next year or the year after. Anyway, what I would concede is that the uh, motion that I've moved shouldn't say mayor, it should say mayor or leader. But at the current moment, and he talks about whether we have a mayor next year, well, that'll be a decision made by you, this council, whether we have a, 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 an elected mayor or not for Liverpool, if we have an elected mayor of the city region, and it will be made by this council, not by anybody else. The reality, though, is. What would you uh, rather have? Somebody that is elected, elected to represent the whole city and representing you as board councillors representing the wards and communities of this city. Or for instance, an elected commissioner that lives over in the Whittle and doesn't understand the Granby community or the Wayland community or the Princess Park community or any other community. And it is simply the fact that I, when we discussed this before in this council, proposed that we look at a mechanism that actually gave the final decision to the council, to the supreme governing body of the city, the council, so that the mayor may, or the leader, may well bring a proposal that we immediately call a special council meeting to stop this particular march taking place, and then everybody would agree. What's wrong with that? It's a simple uh, act that responds to a situation that we don't want in our city. Every single one of us here has all agreed that the scum that came to our streets on Saturday uh, shouldn't be allowed. Now, whether we can actually get government to accept and change legislation that allows us to put prohibited steps orders on parts of the city longer than three months, I've actually asked our council to look at that legally to see what we can do ourselves, because I believe we can do more. Is it right that as uh, you know, trade unionists in this city, as political parties in this city, we have to ask permission to demonstrate Fascists can come here without asking permission. So the bottom line is the thing the law needs to change. And as far as I'm concerned, it is quite simply not a question of who does it or what does it. It is a question of it being locally here, made by Liverpool, because that's where they want to come. I accept Councillor Radford's point about the position of PCC, uh, uh, wanting to ban a march in Knowsley or whatever. But that's up to the Knowsley leaders or whatever. And I would hope that the Home Secretary actually uh, accepts that local decision making should be at the local level. And we make the decision whether we have an elected mayor or an elected leader in capital model. But we should simply have the powers to do it ourselves. That's what the motion calls for. And it's not about tomatoes or tomatoes or as Kemp wants to try and get his name in the paper for making some suggestion to it. It is simply doing what is needed to do immediately. <coughs> so moving to the vote on the amendment. All those in favour of the amendment? All those against?
Are there any abstentions? Seven, against 70, no abstention, the amendment is lost. We move now to the substantive motion, and I've got... Lord Mayor, just to say that I, I, I accept Councillor Radford's uh, amendment, and also would like to include in that, instead of being mayor, it's mayor or leader. And, and the mayor or leader, so that it changes if we've got any intervention. Okay. <laughs> Most grateful, and just, um, if you just add, and other hate crimes on, on Para 4, that does the effect. Thank you, the Mayor. Okay, I've got Councillor Spurrell and Councillor Nicholas and Councillor O'Bear. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, it makes me really angry that we're even having to discuss this tonight. Um, how have these fascists not got the message by now? So many times they have been sent out of our city and yet they still keep coming back. And it makes me really cross um, that the police have to give up their time to protect these people, thanks to the selfish bigots. And that Father Cleansing staff have to give up their Sundays cleaning swastikas off our St George's Hall. When two women a week are being killed by their partners, when antisocial behaviour is still a very real threat for so many of our residents, when refugees are being attacked in their homes, and when lives are still being lost through gun and gang crime, how are we saying to the police you should be facilitating these marches? And our police do a really good job. They are dealing with budget cuts as well, and they are managing to tackle these issues in a really proactive way, working with us as the council. But I don't know about you, but I would much rather our police are spending time working on those issues, protecting our residents, and not facilitating marches for these neo-Nazi scum. And it's not just the police. As we've already heard tonight, um, our um, cleansing staff footed the bill, and the, the council have footed the bill for cleaning up after them, um, and particularly when we're facing cuts as well. As the local representatives of this city, we need the power to ban these groups from entering our city and we need to make it very clear that they are not welcome in Liverpool. <laughs> Councillor Nicholas. <coughs> Thank you, Lord Mayor. Like everyone here, I was so appalled and, but not surprised, at the behaviour of these fascist scum. I think long and hard about Liverpool and where we've come from, the challenges we've had and the progress we've made. And that's why I encourage everyone to support this motion in its entirety. Because we need to send a message collectively as elected members for this city to say that they do not belong here. When the facets came to the trade unionists and we did not speak out because we were not trade unionists, then they came for the black community, but we did not speak out because we were not black. Then they came for the disabled, and we did not speak out because we were not disabled. Then they came for the LGBT community, but we were not LGBT, so we did not speak out. Then they came for the older people, but we were young, so we did not speak out. Then they came for me, and there was no one to speak for me. Let us not be saying this. Let us send a message that collectively we are going to say we do not want them here. We're going to implement legislation, local policy to keep them out of our city. Thank you. Councillor Bain. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, I, I was there on Saturday uh, amongst, amongst people and I was amazed within not much notice, the amount of people that were able to mobilise uh, and come out um, and, and, and hugely outnumber a very small, vicious, violent minority. I think it's always worth pointing out that these, these people don't exist in a vacuum and these protests don't exist in a vacuum. They enter into our society and into our subconsciousness. And when you've got people holding up placards saying refugees are rapists, when they're saying that they're scum, they should be killed, it starts to really infect our society. And I'm sure that we would all agree that that is just not acceptable. And that I do not stand and say that they have a right to spread violence, to spread hatred. That actively puts people in danger, that creates a climate 
where we can dehumanise people and they can so easily be killed because that's what happens, that's what genocide is, that's what the Holocaust was, that's how hate crime is allowed to spread because people don't speak out against it, that it's allowed to be told as free speech. <coughs> Sometimes it's, it's seen as a bit of a, you know, to talk about Hitler and to talk about Nazi Germany, it's a bit of a cliche, but Hitler was elected. He, wasn't, he didn't immediately become a dictator, he was voted in by people because this hatred and this spread of lies and this viciousness was allowed us to go unchallenged and what bit by bit people were dehumanised and then killed and that can so easily happen and we saw it, you know, spread across the continent um, especially in the light of the refugee crisis and I think that we have to make sure that any member of our community is allowed to feel safe and unthreatened. So I'd like to thank Councillor Anna Rodri and Mayor Jo Anderson for bringing this forward. And I hope that we all do support it. Because when you don't challenge it, when you don't go out and shout at them like I did, I've still got a very sore throat from it. When you don't support motions like this and when you don't challenge that constant, nasty, vile, hatred narrative, we end up in a very dangerous situation. So I hope that we can all support this motion unanimously as Liverpool City Council and make sure that it does get through to the message because I think, you know, as much as these people are horrendous, I hope that they start to realise that Liverpool is not a city that will welcome them. Thank you. So we're moving to the, the vote on the main motion, which will include now elected mayor, or leader and cover all forms of hate crime. Yes. All those in favour? Is that unanimous? Yes. Thank you. We now, move. we now move on to motions. Motion 12. Mayor Anderson. Just move the motion in my name, Lord Mayor. Are there any other speakers? Councillor Kushner? Um, thanks, Lord, my Lord Mayor. When I, was, uh, when I was elected in 2012, it was two years into uh, the Slavery Group's administration after taking on the neglect that of the Liberal Democrat administration, particularly in the north end of, of the city. And in my ward in particular, of course, um, we knew exactly what that meant. The Boots Estate that we've mentioned numerous times in this chamber was completely decimated, over 1,500 houses were pulled down, people were promised the opportunity of moving back to new homes that the Lib Dem administration offered, which never bore, came into fruition. And, uh, and that left an area that the Lib Dems weren't really particularly interested in. There were facilities that gone, there was no play area, there was no youth club, there were void properties. People wanted to move away from, from the area. And I have to say, I know you're very good with your invitations, uh, Councillor Richard Camp, but when you're invited regularly and have on a number of occasions to, to come to Norris Green, you've never taken them up. So you've, when you've been invited, I'm inviting you again. I met people the other day. Can we... Councillor Kemp, could you come? Councillor Kemp, could you please sit down? Well, I'll take, I'll take Richard, I'll take Councillor Kemp up on his offer. There are people that I was speaking to the other day who, in their... You know, in the typical Liverpool fashion with the, the, um, the way people respond to those situations, just say, God forgive it for the things that you've done to them and destroyed the community and the people that they knew as their neighbours when they were living there for so many years. You actually put 10 years between big collections and on the Boots Estate from the houses you knocked down. But so, <clears throat> so let's just be clear that when this administration, when this administration came in, we were clear that what we were, what we had been doing is to represent the whole of this city, not just part of it, part of it you choose for Councillor Kent to come to, which you don't want to come to. We've built a thousand houses in, uh, in, in Norris Green. And make no mistake about it, even though we don't build houses, those houses would not have been built without this administration and without our Labour councillors making and facilitating that opportunity. We've built shops, we've had the first skateboard park. Uh, that was in the city that was put into Norris Green. We brought in a play area. Uh, and I have to say, the impact that those things have had is absolutely fundamental. 
But that's really fundamental in terms of people feeling safer in Norris Green in their own homes. In fact, the people don't want to move away from Norris Green uh, anymore. If it's a pride in the area, people are able to live there with the, in, with a kind of um, with a, with a respect and a feeling in the area that that they, if they haven't had for many years before. And I'm happy to say, actually, that when we've got to a situation now with the reduction in crime and antisocial behaviour in the area, that we're actually quite happy when the, the key problem of antisocial behaviour is bad parking in Norris Green. But um, so these are the kind of things and the impact that this council has had across particularly the north end of the city as, as part of it. it represents the fact that we represent the whole of this city, not just the south end of this city. We represent the whole of this city. And I invite anyone to come, and I'm sure you'd be amazed when you come, Councillor Kent, to see what's been done in the area. Um, and just for one fact, which is astonishing really, the countryside who are the developers and builders in the area are selling more houses in Norris Green than they are in any other of their developments anywhere in the country. Now that is what regeneration means to this city. And that's what this Labour administration can do does and will do in the future. Councillor Crow, uh, and I'll be grateful if you keep your comments to the motion, you know. Uh, <laughs> a track record of delivery. We... Yes, you'll be delighted to hear that uh, I'm, I'm not standing up to have a massive go. To be honest, this is of course a list of mostly things that should be celebrated in the city. As an opposition councillor, obviously, spend most of my time looking for things to criticise the administration about, but obviously the vast majority of these things are to be celebrated. One or two that we might uh, query, things around green spaces for example, but overall it's a pretty positive list. Um, but then you get to the actual um, substantive um, thing that the motion is calling for, which is for the Chief Executive to write a letter to the Prime Minister.